The classification and naming of living things, a science known as taxonomy, can result in some truly remarkable accomplishments. The organisation of organisms is important in many ways to better understand the natural world and its complex history, and over centuries of study taxonomy has enabled the wonderful diversity of life on Earth to become far more appreciated. But sometimes very unusual situations can arise, such as the example we're going to look at here, when an entire family of whales that had been believed to be extinct for over a million years was suddenly resurrected in 2013. Well, sort of. The Cetotheres, members of the family Cetotheriidae, are baleen whales known mostly from fossil remains that originated sometime in the late Oligocene, about 28 to 23 million years ago. The taxonomic history of the group has been pretty complicated, with all sorts of different species and genera being placed in the clade which shouldn't really have been there, but today there are fewer taxa in the grouping. This includes genera such as Cetotherium, for which the group is named, as well as species that are still pretty recently being described, for example Ceoceolea named in 2018. Cetotheres are often portrayed in paleoart as being hunted down by large predatory creatures such as Liviatan and the infamous Megalodon, and there is actually a reason for this. The Cetothere Piscobalena was found to display bite marks on its bones that are attributable to Megalodon, indicating that these cetaceans would apparently have been on the menu for one of prehistory's most fearsome hypercarnivores. This lineage of whale is, as I mentioned, classified as a baleen whale, technically known as a mysticete. Among living mysticetes, it seems that the Cetotheres are probably most closely related to the Rorquals and Grey Whales, while being less related to the Right Whales and Bowhead Whale. So then how was it that the Cetotheres, supposedly extinct since some time in the Pleistocene, were brought back from the dead? Well, in 2013 a paper was published in which researchers examined various specimens of a poorly known living cetacean species, the Pygmy Right Whale and recognised several new characteristics of its anatomy that suggested it might actually belong to the Cetotheres. So it was placed in the family and as a result Cetotheriidae was no longer an extinct lineage. Pygmy right whales, Caperia marginata, are the smallest living species of baleen whale and aren't actually closely related to the right whales, as I just mentioned they're closer to rorquals and grey whales. This species is, even today, still incredibly understudied and mysterious. They're thought to have a circumpolar distribution around the southern hemisphere, with sightings and strandings of the whales occurring off the coasts of South America, Southern Africa and Oceania. Little is really known about their behaviour, social structure or total population, other than that they're pretty elusive and sometimes have been seen travelling in pairs. But fortunately Pygmy right whales don't seem to have been greatly affected by whaling or other threats, but then again without an accurate population count there's no way to know for sure. The 2013 assertion of these animals as Cetotheres was quite unexpected, and before then they had been classed in their own family, Neobelinidae, by themselves, but this different arrangement demoted Neobelinidae down to the subfamily Neobelinanae within Cetotheriidae. It was already understood before the reclassification that, despite sharing some characteristics with the Rorquals, the pygmy right whale was quite unlike other mysticetes, displaying all sorts of unique anatomy in the skull and body skeleton, and particularly in the ear bone. However, not all researchers agree that Caperia is a cetothere, as a few later studies found different results when they examined the anatomy of the pygmy right whale. One example of this includes the publication in which the Cetothere genus Herentalia was described, and a phylogenetic analysis of the taxon and its relation to other whales tested the hypothesis of Caperia being a Cetothere, finding that the pygmy right whale could not be included within Cetotheriidae. Other researchers have also proposed that the pygmy right whale group may just be the sister clade to Cetotheres and not actually included within them, but it would seem that more studying, more fossils and a better understanding of the mysterious Caperia would certainly help to clarify its relationships to other cetaceans. So as you've seen, taxonomy is a powerful tool, even capable of raising extinct lineages from the dead. In a technical sense anyway. It's therefore an important aspect of science to appreciate, as with it we're able to learn how the beings of the natural world are all related to one another, and even if it is a human construct that can be changed significantly from study to study, it's crucial to scientists, enabling them to communicate concepts effectively and examine the evolution of different groups of organisms in detail. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters Dominic Bathy, George Vojtek, Darkerot, and Nicole Bueno. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.